So when it comes to improving flexibility, we've always done stretching exercises, right? Well, there's a new sheriff in town and that's Eccentric Training here to give you flexibility and strength. If you want to find out more, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So for so long, as long as I can remember, static and dynamic stretches have been the key thing to use to improve flexibility. But recently, the research, particularly in the last two years, has focused on the role of eccentric training and whether or not it actually has a bigger role than stretching altogether. So let's dive into the evidence to find out more about this. So first, I'd like to show you this systematic review by Afonso et al. 2021, which was one of the first key pieces of research that I had found looking at this subject. So these researchers analyzed the differences between stretching and strength training, focusing on 11 particular randomized controlled trials, which included 452 individual participants. So what was the makeup of these articles? Well, seven of them were female only participants or predominantly female. Three of them were male only or predominantly male. And one of them was a mixture of men and women. Now the number of weekly training sessions, really interestingly, none of the articles advised on doing eccentric training every day. The minimum number of training sessions per week was two in one particular article and the maximum was five. So that's something certainly to take away from it. There was a very big variety described by the authors in terms of the number of reps and sets. And also most of the articles focused on the lower limb with only a few looking at the shoulder and the upper limb. So their overall conclusion, the first major thing that we take away from this research review is that they found no differences in flexibility results between those groups who did stretching and those who did strength training, which ultimately gave the authors the article for the whole review, which is that strength training is as effective as stretching for improving range of motion. The key thing here is as effective, not better, not worse. So then we have a second systematic review, which is from Veta et al. 2022. And these authors, rather than looking at the differences between stretching and strengthening, they focused in more on eccentric training, looking at what are the benefits of eccentric training in terms of flexibility and strength improvements. So some of the articles they looked at compared eccentric training to another form of strength training, such as concentric or isometrics, and some of them compared eccentric training to a control group. So Veta et al. examined 18 different trials. On average, the length of the intervention was seven weeks. And like Afonso et al., none of the research papers they looked at did daily eccentric training. Instead, the average number of training sessions per week was 2.7. Average number of reps, 9.1. Average number of sets, 4.5. So that gives us a little bit of an indication into the protocols used. So the results, super interesting. They found that eccentric training created improvements in strength in 17 out of the 18 trials. And they found that eccentric training led to improvements in flexibility in 16 out of the 18 trials. Conversely, strength training of a concentric manner naturally led to improvements in strength across a lot of the articles. But none of the articles found a meaningful improvement in flexibility when it came to concentric training. So their overall conclusion, and in their own words, clear evidence that eccentric training offers improvements in flexibility and strength by including an element of strengthening and an element of stretching in one exercise. Interestingly, like Afonso et al., they found that there isn't much evidence that investigates the effects of eccentric training in the upper limb. Instead, most of the articles that they reviewed looked at eccentric training in the lower limb, and therefore that's something that definitely needs to be looked into in the future. So what does this mean for our video? Well, it tells us that eccentric training is better than concentric training for making improvements in flexibility and strength. And it also tells us that strength training is as effective as stretching for improving flexibility. But I suppose overall, that's my biggest take home message, the combination of those two thoughts. Concentric training does one thing, it strengthens. Stretch training does one thing, it lengthens. Eccentric training does both. Winner. So yeah, I have to admit, I'm a major fan of eccentric training. Even if your goal with your client is increasing flexibility, you get the strengthening as a bonus but you also get the improvements in confidence that I really see with my clients day to day. You also find that 
eccentric training is much more functional compared to stretching. If we're picking up something from the floor, if we're reaching for something far away, that's eccentric movements. It's much more adjusted to our lifestyle. So therefore, it's a big hit for me. So what are some of the common eccentric training exercises that I tend to use in my practice? Well, we've seen from the evidence that it's mainly biased towards the lower limb. So one example that I'll use all the time, especially for the calf muscle, is calf raises off a step whereby the individual is also going to do that lowering down of their heel off the step in order to stretch the calf complex. We also do a lot of eccentric training for the hamstring muscles. I'm sure you'll be familiar with the Nordic hamstring exercise, but the key thing about the Nordics is that they tend to focus on the knee component of the hamstrings. Don't forget that the hamstrings also cross the hip joint, and we therefore need to work that component as well. And therefore, your Romanian deadlifts are definitely an exercise that I go back to time and time again to stretch the hip component as well. So what about reps and sets? Well, if we look at Veter et al 2022, the average number of reps across the studies was 9.1. The average number of sets was 4.5. So we tend to use a rep range of around 9 to 12 and a set range of around 4 to 5. The other key thing to remember, of course, as with both articles we looked at, none of them focused on daily training, instead doing an average of two to three training sessions per week, making sure that the muscles have time to adjust and recover as well as do the work too. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Clinical Physio and on our website clinicalphysio.com where we have a full exercise prescription webinar for you which gives you some great details, link in the description below. I'm Khalid, thank you so much for watching, see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.